So we had said that regression, the idea of regression was to find, linear regression was to find a straight line that was closest to all points, right? We measure how close things are to this line, how points are close to this line with something called the error. And the error is going to be the distance for every point, from every point to this line, from this point to the line and this point to the line and this point to the line, right? That distance averaged, uh, it's going to be the error. We're going to compute the error to, to see how good our line is doing. Okay? And remember that this line if, is basically a straight line. A function of some variable plus something times x. So, how do we uh, formalize this? Well, we want to minimize hx, which is our prediction, our line, minus the points, right? So why we're going to call it the ground truth. So ideally, this line would pass so close to the points that this distance will be, the average of this distance would be minimized, right? Now, because of uh, ne one reason, but because of negatives and positives, for example, we want to get the square of this distance. So we always have a positive value and we want to minimize that, okay, for the average. So we want to minimize the average of the square of whatever I predict in a certain point and whatever the ground truth is for that certain point. So for example, in the, um, in the previous example, I was using weight and I wanted to predict the height. So in here, this would be the height predicted versus the actual height at a given weight, right? And if I can reduce that, if, if that distance is, is uh, small, I will, I will be reducing the error for all the points that I give us training data. And again, training data is all the points that I know, right? So the best line is the one that minimizes the, error, the average squared error between any point in this line and the points of data that I already have. Once I have that line that minimizes that, then I can predict new points. So. More formally, in math terms, I want to find the minimum theta 0 and theta 1 for this function. This, if you think about it, is just an average. It's the sum of the square errors divided by the number of points. Oh, it's divided by twice the number of points. But in terms of, this is going to be uh, convenient for math, but in terms of minimizing the average, it's, a, it's the same to minimize the average and minimize uh, half the average is the same thing. Okay, so this two really doesn't do anything. It doesn't change our minimization. It just makes math uh, easier. So again, we're going to minimize the average and I want you to understand this is just an average with, you know, divide by two or by half. All right. So we want to minimize this function. Now this, uh, and we want to find the parameters theta zero and theta one, right, that minimize this. So we're going to say that this little thing is going to be j, or any number of functions, you could have called it, you know, hooky dooky, whatever, j of theta zero and theta one. That's going to be the cost function. So this basically, the, the task now, it becomes minimizing theta zero and theta one for this cost function. Now, one intuition that's important is that if you have two variables, right, two variables, these two variables, and together they give you the cost, then this is a three-dimensional problem, right? You have, whoops, you have, the, you have the two variables. You have the two variables, theta zero, theta one, and you want to minimize the cost. So if you plot different costs, different theta zero and theta one, and the error, and you compute the error, right, using the, the formula, you will find something like this, right? So this is theta one, this is theta zero, and the error is a curve like this. So you want to find the point here at the bottom, okay, at the bottom of this. Now, what's interesting is that how can we find the, the point at the bottom? Well, the intuition is the following. If we could find the slope of the tangent at any given point here, right, 
they, they would have a slope because they're, the tangent, say, for example, at this point uh, or at this point has a slope because it's going down like that, right? But in the minimum, if we look at it in two dimensions, right, this is like this. So the tangent at any given point has a slope, but at the minimum, the slope is zero. There's no slope for the tangent. So if we can find the slope of the tangent when it's zero, that's when, it min well, that's when it's minimized. Now, the interesting thing is that to find the slope of a tangent, we need to use something called the derivative of a function. And that has to be zero. Why? Because the derivative of a function, when it's zero, it is, it's basically when the slope of the tangent is zero. Now, derivatives are denoted with the little, this little d here, right? And here is the variable that you want to compute the derivative of. So for the parameter that you want to compute the derivative of, okay? So in this case, I want to find the derivative for theta j or and j going from 1 to 2 because I only have two thetas, right? So the derivative of this cost function with respect to theta 1 and with respect to theta 2. To do that, okay, if, if I expand j, remember j was this. Now I change my n to an m, but it's the same thing. It's the, uh, basically minimize the, the derivative of the error function, right? This is the error function. So I want to minimize the, I want to find the derivative of the error function and equate it to zero. Now remember that this h, the, h of xi, it's basically theta zero plus theta one, right? It's, it's our straight line. So basically this is what I want to find the derivative of and equal that to zero. And I want, I want to derive this with respect to theta zero and with respect to theta one. Now, uh, you might not know how derivatives work and that's fine. I'm just, you can just skip this, this slide if that's the case. But the derivative with respect to theta zero and e equated to, to zero, you're going to get this. One over m times the summation of the predicted values minus the ground truth. And for theta one, you're going to get the exact same thing times x, the x that you want. Now, if we go in more detail and do some, some more math that I'm not going to go over, right? You can follow this math. You will find that you can separate certain summations, cancel things out, and you will find that, uh, for example, theta zero here is the mean of the uh, ground truth minus theta one times the mean of the x values. And if I start replacing that in the, in, the, in the different equations, if I replace this in the equations for theta one, I will arrive at a complex set of summations and I can isolate terms and I get to something along the lines of this. I define an S of K ter uh, term that's going to be the square root. I define R that's going to be this. And then I define theta one is just going to be, once I, once I compute this, theta one is going to be this and theta zero is going to be what we said was going to be. Now, this is super complicated to get here. I mean, it looks like super complicated to get here. Now, I said that you might have many variables to find the, the, the correlation of, right? And what happens is that if you have more variables, right, then the square, the, the straight line is not a straight line, but it's a, what's called a plane. And it goes like this, theta zero plus theta one x one, that's the straight line, plus theta two x two, plus and so on and so forth, all the number of variables that you have, okay? The cost function then will change a little bit, right? And again, I'm glossing over the math because I, for, for this, you just need to know the intuitions. But the cost function is this, right? It's the ground truth minus the predicted values, okay? And uh, squared, of course. 
So now um, we assume that this theta zero has an x next to it, but that x is one, and that's going to be helpful later. Now, this we can note in matrix notation. You see, it'll become this, where, where uh, y is a matrix of ground truth, and x is a matrix of values, and theta is the matrix of parameters that we want to find, times the same thing transposed. And when we derive this, we equate this to zero. And if we solve this equation in matrix terms, this is what we get. So if you had to program this, say in Excel or in uh, Python or any programming language, you can just look at matrix operations and you can have all your data and you can transpose that and multiply it by itself. And then you can compute the inverse of that and multiply it by the transpose and then by the ground truth. You have all this information in Excel and all of these things, for example, for Excel, would be matrices. And Excel can work with matrices and can find the inverse and the transpose and all that stuff. And you find your parameters right away. In Python, there's a library called uh, NumPy that actually does this. And if you want to work on how would this be in a Python program, well, here is a sample code for that right here so your inputs you assume that the inputs are your data your your variables in matrix form and your targets are your values that uh basically the values that you that you have predicted before your points right so say for example you might have enrollments that depend on summer and fall enrollment and then you get the next spring so Given the summer and the fall enrollments, what are we going to get the next spring? That's what we want to find. So based on summer and fall, I can try and find what the next spring enrollment is going to be. So in the inputs would be the summer and fall enrollments, and in the targets would be the spring enrollments that I have. And that will give me the thetas to then use in an equation to predict the values for another spring with different summer and fall enrollments. And you can see that this is basically just here. I just add uh, a matrix of ones for that for that theta zero. Remember, we said that they have an X, but we just say that X is one here. I add the ones to the inputs and then I find the thetas are the multiplication of the inverse of the uh, transpose matrix of the inputs and the inputs and the transpose of the inputs. This is the multiplication that I just showed you, right? And then the outputs, we just multiply that by, uh, by our values. Okay. So by our theta, that's the outputs. So this is, this, uh, Python code is basically just doing what the matrix operations, um, we're doing. It's, a, uh, it's important to say that this inputs and targets are going to be NumPy arrays. And then in Excel, you can do the same thing with matrices. In the next video, I'm going to show for many variables, this can be very expensive to compute. Okay, this can be very expensive. So I'm going to show a different method to compute it that's uh, cheaper and, um, and it uses approximation.